We're glad you're here. We're so glad. I uh, hope you got here in time to eat you some breakfast. Those ladies over there are, are just tearing it up. The ministry's been tearing it up, and the kitchen's been tearing it up, and the praise team's been tearing it up. So I told, I, so I've stayed tore up. I can't help it. No matter where I go, I stay tore up. And, and uh, but I'm so grateful to be surrounded by um, folks that just make you look good, you know. Because I can, I can stand the cosmetic touch up, right? So anyway, but the, everybody's just doing so, uh, doing such an awesome job here in the house of, to host, and I, I trust that if you haven't felt at home that uh, you've checked yourself because uh, we, uh, we believe the Holy Ghost has made you feel welcome and we believe that the people here have made you feel welcome so we just, uh, we just we're, we're glad you're here we're glad to be able to be hosting this event and so just hallelujah to the Lord we bless him and we praise his name so uh, a couple of announcements I think Jared uh, put up the for all you guys that are online, I think a, a link to the direct link to the, or a picture of the Venmo, uh, how to give by Venmo, give online is up there. So, so that should be really fresh in there. You shouldn't have to look for it really long. Uh, for those of you who are here and want to give, if you write a check, make it out to Praise Cathedral and help uh, defray some of the costs of this stuff. We uh, uh, just there's baskets back there and on each side of the door. So hit them coming or going and will be good. So praise, appreciate all the help and all the donations you can do. And uh, we're grateful for an opportunity to enter into his presence. And I want to, I want to read something. I'll be right back in the camera here in a minute if I'm out of it. So it occurred to me in the theme of the, of the conference, I saw something early this morning that I wanted to, what I thought would be appropriate to share. So uh, it's out of the Mirror Translation, or the Mirror Bible, I should say. It's in 1 Thessalonians chapter 2 and verse 19. And I love this. Paul says this to the church of Thessalonica. 1 Thessalonians 2 and 19. We expect nothing less in the context of the gospel than you enjoying a face-to-face -face encounter in the immediate presence of our Lord Jesus Christ. This is our delight and our wreath of honor. This is our crown. So Father, we thank you today. And Father, we our expectation is a face-to-face -face encounter that, that imparts joy, that imparts grace, that, that elevates and lifts up and, and and just blesses and edifies the heart of every every believer, every one Father that has gathered here and gathered unto you, Lord. We honor and bless you and thank you for an opportunity to be in your presence, for an opportunity to have an encounter with the Most High God, the God who is so big.
and most of us have heard of Jezebel. You know, she was a well, very nice lady. And her husband Ahab was just as bad as she was. She manipulated him, but you know, he was pretty bad. But it did say that there was 7,000 people in that his kingdom. He was king over Israel who hadn't bowed their knees to Baal. Yeah. Um, but when Bishop spoke last night, he talked about what a great, big, powerful, almighty, I don't remember all the words he said, because, oh, look, there goes a squirrel. I don't remember things very well. You know, it's kind of like, that's me, all right? If God can use people like me who can't remember past the end of your nose sometimes, he can use anybody. Um, but I was reading in, um, Ahab was going up against, I believe it was the, the king of Syria. Jeff, I, I, help me. Abinadab, is that it? Whatever, whoever it was. He was going up against him. Yeah, thank you. Oh, what's his name? And, and I think it said at that point that he had 7,000 men fighting. Now, this was not the 7,000 necessarily. Some of them, maybe some of the ones who had it, they bowed their knee. But they were his army. He had 7,000 fighting men. And he was going up against 200 men. 32,000. I don't know. He was going up against a whole bunch. And they fought from the top of a mountain. And they drove them back. They defeated them. But those guys that had come against them said they could beat us on the mountain. But here on the plains, this is our territory. Up there, they can beat us. But down here, they can't beat us. And so they underestimated the all-powerful, almighty God of creation. And when Ahab, and like I said, Ahab wasn't even a good guy, but God let him beat, beat them. And it said that they were like two small flocks of sheep. Somehow they were, and I don't know, like I said, I'm, I'm not a scholar. I don't know the significance of all that, but I was reading it, and I thought, you know, they were little. There weren't very many of them, and they were divided into two parts, and they had this massive army. And they said, who thought? You can beat us on the mountain because you had the advantage on the mountain. But down here, you're in our territory. We can beat you down here. But guess what? The God on the mountain is the God in the valley. And they lost. He's big up there. He's big down here. He's big wherever you are. He is big wherever you are. Yeah, you know, I was reading that. I was thinking,
blessing of your life. Dial in. There's miracles in that word. Yes, sir. 
man, there's supernatural help and ability in that word. He sent his word and he healed them and yes, delivered them from their destruction. This is my thought. When God starts talking, there's no time to be casual. Yes, sir. There's no time to pass notes back and forth. No, no, that's, that's the time to dial in on the presence of the living God. For man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God shall man live. And would you lift your hearts with me right now and just say, Lord Jesus, I don't want to miss a word. I don't want to miss a word. Every word that comes out of your mouth, hallelujah, is bringing life and manifested glory to me. Praise God. Praise God. So, um, we're thankful to be here this morning. Um, I enjoyed watching you dance this morning. Uh, I got a story about that in just a little bit, but I just think that it's wonderful when man and God be humble enough just to get out there and dance and do that. You, know, you, don't, you don't see a lot of men dance like that. And, uh, and I'll give you a testimony in just a little bit, but um, I was believing the Lord for a miracle um, recently and uh, just something that needed to, to transpire. And uh, the Lord said, uh, you know, look for me, it's for someone else. And the Lord says, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll give it to you, but uh, you're going to dance for it. I said, I'm going to dance for it. And God said, yeah, you're going to dance for it. And I explained to the Lord that I don't dance. <laughs> and the Lord said to me, but you do now. You do now. And so I, I got up the, the next morning and I went back into the back room back there and I I put on dry bones rabbit. I don't know if you ever heard that story. I guess you have. Hallelujah. And man, I tell you, I moved my foot out this way. And the truth before God, before I could get my foot back on the floor, the power of God hit me. Tears were running down my cheek. My God, the, my mind opened to the heavens that were around me. I started seeing things and prophesying the glory of God. I haven't missed a day of dancing since. I, I got up this morning and danced. I sent texts to people said, I danced for you this morning. Hallelujah. I didn't dance with you. I danced for you. Praise God. And so it was just a few moments or a few days after that, that uh, Pastor Jeff, I had a dream. And in the dream, um, I was at a church service. And um, uh, there was someone there that needed a miracle. And uh, in the dream, the Lord said to me, he said, uh, uh, someone needs to dance for this lady. And there was a lady on the front pew here uh, in the dream that was a prophetic dancer. And so in the dream, I went to her and I said, ma'am, dance for that lady. And uh, this woman, for whatever reason, in the dream wouldn't dance. And I said, Lord, I said, uh, she won't dance. And the Lord said, will you dance? And in the dream, I'm like, now it's okay to dance in the back room when nobody's looking, but God, the angels, but Lord, you, you, are we going public? And the Lord's <laughs> in practice in the back room, we're coming out of the secret place, right? And the Lord said to me, this is what he said to me, and I know this is a prophetic gesture, but he said to me, David, somebody is going to dance. And he said, if I had to go and dance myself, I said, no, 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 the rocks are not going to cry out. No, you don't have to dance. We'll dance in the presence of God. And we'll dance and let the glory of God be made manifest. So anyway, I've been dancing and oh, what a joy. And I danced this morning. I danced for us this morning, praise God, and danced for the glory of the Lord. So if the power of God moves on you, you want to dance like David dance, you go ahead and do it. Help yourself in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Would you give him a good cheer this morning? Oh, we're worthy, Lord. You're worthy, Jesus. All right. Deuteronomy 10 and 8. We're going to talk a little bit more about the ark of his presence. And I just want to say this as we're getting started. And, and we'll cultivate this thought as we go. But whenever you come under the shadow and the presence and the influence of the presence of God, the ark of his glory, it, it's the highest level of influence. In, in, in that dimension of thought, I said it last night, that there is nothing in the earth more powerful than a redeemed man. You know, we, we're, we're amongst a lot of educated people and we know a whole lot about this stuff. But, but there's another dimension of experience where we go beyond knowledge and we just go beyond just that understanding of things and we start to encounter 
We have come unto Mount Zion, but somebody's going to start living like they've come to Mount Zion. Somebody's going to start talking like they're living on Mount Zion. And somebody's going to see things from an entirely different perspective. Come on, somebody, wave your hands and say, that somebody is me. Hallelujah. But, but how many of you have lived long enough to know that when you come under the influence of God, you do think different? Trouble don't trouble you no more. You know, if I'm worried about something, I know that my mind is not encountering the presence of God. If I'm frustrated, irritated, aggravated, I know that's a very unprofitable state for me. And I need to be under the shadow of His presence. My soul, hallelujah, my soul needs to be influenced by the presence of the living God. You know, I, I believe that in the earth that the Lord says you're not just going to go for me, but you're going to go as me. I believe that's the heart and the mind of God. Yeah. Jesus is great, and he's great on the inside of us. Yeah. Amen. The Lord said to uh, Moses, I'm sending you to Egypt, and I know that Pharaoh supposedly is the most powerful man in the earth. But Moses, it's not true. I made you a God to Pharaoh. Yeah. And I heard the Lord say, David, I made you a God to cancer. I made you a God to diabetes. I made you a God to mountains of circumstance and opposition. Ah, there's nothing more powerful in the earth than a redeemed man. Come on, somebody. And I am redeemed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jesus is big, but Jesus is big on the inside of me. Come on, I just want us to do this together. Stretch your hands down and say, Lord, bring us under the canopy and the influence of the ark of your presence, Lord. And may we live, move, and abide in the conscious awareness of your glory. So at that time, the Lord separated the tribe of Levi. Now let me just say that when we talk about Levi, we know that we're not under that Levitical system, and we know that we're in the Melchizedek priesthood. You know, I remember when I first came into kingdom reality, they, they taught me about the Melchizedek priesthood, and that was the elite. You know, then you had your other smaller folk there in the kingdom, but this elite realm was the Melchizedek, and then you understand it, and you covenant, there's only one priesthood, and it's a Melchizedek priesthood. Hallelujah. And, and we all are a part of the Melchizedek priesthood. Hallelujah. But let me say this to you. There are levels of experience to this dimension. Hallelujah. And some people are more plugged in consciously. And it does make a difference in the earth. It makes a difference in the earth. I'll show you this in just a bit. But it makes a difference of the activity that is drawn to your life. Angels respond. Yes, they do. They're on assignment. That they're looking for the word. They hearken to the voice of God's word. Hallelujah. And they're on assignment. They're ministering spirits. Sent forth the minister not just to us, but for us who be heirs of salvation. Hallelujah. And I have discovered and learned uh, what attracts angels, praise God, and the heavenly host. And how many know that the host of heaven is a very powerful new covenant reality? If you go into the new covenant, you're going to find out there are angels everywhere. They were assisting uh, the men of God and the women of God in the new covenant. So, so we need to be very inclined to the higher dimensions of the Lord. Okay, so, but, but everybody say, but I'm in the Melchizedek priesthood. And there are levels to this game. And I'm going to the highest possible level in my consciousness and my awareness and my experience with God. And I feel to just labor, belabor that point just a little bit. Some people have more experience with God than others. But we all have equal opportunity. I want somebody just to say, I'm not going to bear the worry and I'm not going to bear the concern. I'm not going to bear the weight of this world and the care thereof. But I'm going to bear the ark of the presence of God Almighty. Separated the tribe of Levi, number one, to bear the Ark of the Covenant. 
of the Lord, to stand before the Lord and to minister unto him and to bless in his name unto this day. First of all, I just want to point out that there is a separation that takes place. This, this word separate, it comes from a Hebrew word that means to divide. It figuratively, it means to separate, watch this, to distinguish, to differ, and to select. As new covenant priest, we, we are set apart. We are, we are elected, selected. We, we are appointed. We, we are preferred. We are distinguished. We are privileged to bear the marvelous weight of God's presence and God's glory. We've been handpicked. We're not accidents here today. Uh, Jesus said, you've not chosen me, but I have chosen you. You have been wonderfully and marvelously distinguished and set apart and separated from the world into my glory to bear the ark of my presence, uh, to leave a mark on your generation. Hallelujah. Nobody can make your sound. Nobody can do what you do. You are a separated, hand-picked, selected individual to show forth the praises of the one who called you out of darkness into his marvelous life. Oh, what a privilege. Amen. What an honor it is to be separated into that glory. And there is a, a separation. Paul said in Galatians 1.5 that God separated me from my mother's womb. And, and 2 Corinthians 6.17, come out from among them. And be ye separate, saith the Lord. Touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you. Uh, that word receive is only used one time in the entire Bible. It literally means I will receive you into favor. That, that the more you allow me to separate you, and the more you allow me to make the distinction, to show that you're not just ordinary, you're not just common. Yeah. Thank God, hallelujah, for his grace. You know, a lot of times we, 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 do, we preach mercy and call it grace. Uh -huh. Hallelujah. But, but, but mercy says, I never get what I do deserve. Uh -huh. Grace says, I do get what I don't deserve. Yes, Mercy loves me in my sin, <laughs> but grace loves me too much to leave me there. Yes, sir. Grace says, I, mercy says, I'll, I'll, I'll embrace you in your weakness, but, but grace, uh, mercy says, I'll embrace you in your weakness, but grace says, but I won't leave you there. I'll raise you. We come boldly to the throne of grace that we might obtain mercy, but then we find grace to help in time of need. Grace says, I'm a helper. I'm a divine empowerment. I'm an influence influence on your heart that is reflected in your life. I'll do something so mighty and glorious on the inside of you that you won't be able to hide it. Hallelujah. So we're separated into the favor. In Hebrews 7, 26, Jesus was holy, harmless, undefiled, and separate from sinners. And so that you don't misunderstand my heart, we're not talking about the religious thing. We're not talking, ladies, how you wear your hair, your makeup, whether you do or whether you don't, where you go. Well, we're not we're not talking about behavioral or modification. We're not talking about any of that. Well, we're just talking about this marvelous state of mind. Whenever you see Jesus was separate from sinners, we know that's not physical, yep. right? He eat with them, yes, right? He he loved them. He touched them. He he, he lived among them. He, he actually drew them unto himself. There was something about. Jesus. He was a friend of sinners and he still is a friend of sinners. If Jesus is a friend of sinners, David Levister is a friend of sinners as well. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We know that Jesus is not turned off by our dirt. Thank God for that. But there was something about Jesus that was completely separate. His state of mind, his state of being. No man hath ascended up to heaven, but he who came down from heaven, even the Son of Man which is in heaven. Jesus occupied heaven and earth at the same time. Yes, and because of that, he was separate. He was not ordinary. Yes, oh, he could walk on water and heal the sick and raise the dead and do all those marvelous things simply because he was separated into a realm of reality. Yeah. Trouble did not trouble him. He troubled trouble. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. And, and so I, I sense that. And I, don't, I sense I'm not the only one in the room that senses this divine separation into the glory of the Lord. 
Hallelujah. Cares and frustrations and things that we've given our attention to. We're, we're stepping into a realm where we'll not give our attention to those things. Why would I give my attention to a problem or what somebody did or said when I could give that to Jesus? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So in Acts chapter 26, watch this. Uh, everybody say divine separation. Uh, this is whatever uh, the Lord had called uh, Paul. Saul at the time, Paul, that he's rehearsing this, but uh, we're just jumping right in the middle. But this is what the Lord said to Paul. He said, but rise and stand on thy feet, for I have appeared unto thee for this purpose, to make thee a minister and a witness, both of these things which thou hast seen, and of those things in which I will yet. Well, I'm going to appear. You've seen some stuff, but you're going to see a whole lot more than what you've seen which I will appear unto thee. But watch this carefully. Delivering thee from the people, separating you, distinguishing you, setting you apart from the people and from the Gentiles unto whom now I send thee. So you see God separated him from and then sent him to. The most effective that will ever be in people's lives is that when we can walk in a place of consciousness of God to the point that we are delivered from them. Mm. Delivered from uh, their murmuring, delivered from their complaining, yeah. delivered from yeah. their, their, their unfaithfulness. Yeah. The greatest distraction I've ever had in my life is the very thing God called me to do. <laughs> yes, and the Lord said to me years ago, David, I called you to pastor, but I didn't call you to worship what you're doing. You, you shouldn't spend so much time talking about it, thinking about it, and pointing at it. That's not the vision. Right, right. David, I am your vision. Yep. Yeah. Everything else flows out of that. If you want to see real power and real glory, you'll get your eyes off people. You'll get your eyes off things. You'll get your eyes off circumstances. And you'll get yourself off you. And you'll get your eyes on the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Let me deliver you from the people, starting with you. <laughs> then I can send you to them. Yeah. And you can carry power and glory. And so then God began to train me. And I'm still in training for reigning. Hallelujah. Yes, so I was recalling this morning, I hadn't thought about this in a long time, so I'm supposing God wants me to share this. But I'm recalling a couple of incidents. A, a gentleman in our church, been in our church, this has been years ago, and he... Uh, he, he turns sour, right? Walk in the room, you can feel him. He's turned sour now, so he's got a problem. Finally, after about three weeks of that, he says to me, Hey, I, uh, Bishop, I need to talk to you. Real firm guy, you know. I need to talk to you in your office. I said, Okay, let's go in here and talk. And I went and sat down in the chair. He's sitting on the couch across the, the, the way there. And he pointed his finger at me, and boy, he, he man, his face turned blood red. He started telling me all this stuff that I did to him and all the things that I have offended him. And he was he just face turning blood red. And I'm sitting over there, Pastor Jeff, and I'm talking to the Lord on the inside. And I said, Lord, how do I handle this? And the Lord said, let him vent. And after he gets through venting, repent. And I said back to the Lord, I said, but I didn't do anything. I didn't do any of this. And the Lord says, no, you didn't, but he thinks you did. Repent. And, and what was God doing? He was separating me from, from this. He was separating me from the need to defend myself. Hallelujah. And, and so after he got done, I, I, just, I did. I repented to him. I said, brother, you know, I did any of those things. God knows I'm, I'm sorry. I repent. I, I didn't mean to. It was, if I did that, it was by accident. I would never intentionally hurt you, but I repent. Could you please forgive me? He was like, oh. and then, and I'm not going to tell you it works this way all the time, but he, this guy, he finally calmed down. And then he said, you know, after a few minutes, he said, he started to weep. And he said, it's just not you, Bishop. It's me. I'm hurting. I'm sorry. But see, he would have never seen that had I defended myself or, you know, just, there's a higher dimension. So listen, another time, another time, it just came to me, just, there's this lady that called me on the phone one day, and this has been a few years back, and she said, uh, I need some counsel. And so I was counseling with her on the phone. I never met her physically, but she was, a, or naturally, but she was a very, 
uh, aggressive kind of personality. She was very opinionated. And, and she had some issues, that's for sure. But one day she called me and said that this lady had offended her. And, and she didn't realize the lady that she said offended her was my sister. And she said, I don't know if you know so-and-so, which would be my sister. And she said, but she started going down. She did this and did that. And she, she started calling her all kind of names. And, and then she said this. She said, she ain't nothing but an old whore just like her mother. Just like her mother. Of course, it's my mother. My mother passed away many years ago. My best friend at the time. And uh, a woman of God. She said she's just an old whore, just like her mother was a whore. And she went on talking about her mother. And I marveled. I marveled, Pastor Jeff, at the glory. I said, there nothing in me shifted, nothing in me moved. My pulse rate didn't change. I didn't take it personal. Uh, I already knew the truth. The truth had made me free. Yeah. You understand? Yeah. I didn't have to respond. I didn't have to retaliate. And the Lord said to me, I have separated you from the people to whom now I will send you prophesied deliverance over this woman. Had I got offended, Deliverance isn't coming. Somebody just lift your hands and say, I'm, I'm anointed to bear the ark of the presence of God. Hallelujah. The ark of his presence brings a different kind of influence. It brings a different kind of insight. There's a new government that's arising in the earth. I mean, I sense this deep. I hope I'm not the only one. If I'm the only one, I feel bad for the rest of you. But I'm, I'm sensing the glory of God. I feel like we've been set up. I feel like God is turning water to wine. I feel like God has filled the storehouses. God has fed us. Man, he's fed us way too good. We've got more information than we know what to do with. But I believe God is shifting some things and bringing us into some experience where we can demonstrate the glory of God on an entirely different level. But when you bring that ark into its proper place, yeah, that in all things, he might have the preeminence. Jesus holds first place. And when you bring the ark in its proper place, that ark is elevated above your head, above your mind. Then you come under the influence of it and you start to experience the new heavens. Peter talked about the new heavens and he said that the day of the Lord will so come as a thief. But watch it, in the night. In the night. Well, what does a thief do? A thief comes to take what doesn't belong to him. And the Lord said, that's what I do in my day. I come to take what don't belong to me. Cancer don't belong to me. <laughs> Depression don't belong to me. Guilt and inferiority don't, don't belong to me. But, but I'm going to take it. And then there's a lot of people that hold on to so much stuff that's not God. God said, I'm going to take that too. But the, but the day of the Lord so comes as a thief in the night. And Peter said the heavens would be on fire and the elements would burn. And we know that's talking about the principles of the law and the old covenant stuff. And, and he said that the, the, the earth and the works therein would be burned. But Peter said, but we, according to his promise, we're looking for a new kind of government. Yeah. We're looking for a new heavens. Yeah. We're looking for a new dimension to operate out of. Not, not the old heavens. Those are passed away. They're gone. We're not operating out of some legal system. We're not operating out of that anymore. We're not viewing things from a human perspective. But we're operating out of a new dimension, a new realm, a new government. When Jesus came into the world and the heavens opened unto him, those were new heavens. Do you understand? Jesus was bringing a new kind of government and a new kind of authority like the world has never seen before. And if you can hear it by faith, we are anointed to do the same. Hallelujah. And, and if we operate out of new heavens, there will be a new earth. Hallelujah. You can go to Genesis 1. The heavens rule. The heavens. God made two great lights. The sun and the moon. One to rule the day. One to rule the night. Heaven rules the earth. Heaven was created to rule. The earth was created to be ruled. Naturally speaking, the earth has no impact at all on heaven. But heaven has an enormous impact on the earth. Yes, and he has raised us up and made us to sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Praise God. And when we start operating out of this higher government, our perspective changes. We start seeing things from the perspective of Zion. Things look different from higher altitudes. 
my, my wife and I, we were downtown Charlotte a, a few years back, and, and we were walking, and I was just looking at all the tall buildings, and the tallest building in downtown Charlotte is a, a bank, and I, I stood at the foot of that bank, and I looked up at that thing, and almost make you wobble it. It's like, wow, look, look how big, tall that building is. It's massive. A few days later, I was flying out of Charlotte. <laughs> We got up in the air, we got, we kept climbing higher and higher, and I looked down and I saw the city of Charlotte, and, and, and I, I looked and I saw that great big building, and it didn't look so big anymore. Yeah. And the Lord said, isn't it isn't amazing how when perspective changes and your altitude shifts that things of earth grow very dim and very small. And, and the Lord said to me, David, you see that big building that looks so big? And I said, yes, sir. He said, put your thumb up. I put my thumb up and the building disappeared behind my thumb. Hallelujah. People in the plane probably thought I was crazy. He said, yeah. <laughs> he, he, said, uh, uh, he said, put your foot up by the window. I took my foot up and put it by the window. And then the whole city disappeared. And God said, don't you understand? I placed all things beneath your feet. You need to live, move, and have your being from the high dimensions of the Spirit of God. And you need to see things from Mount Zion. Yes. A few weeks later, we got back. We were in downtown Charlotte again. I walked to the bottom of that building. I looked up and I said, God, No, it didn't work. God said, No, 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 baby. <laughs> Come on, somebody. The things look different from higher altitudes. Praise God. And, and, and you know, whenever we really begin to experience these new dimensions, these new heavens that are available, that, that you and I are presently seated in, that we need to be very, very conscious, very aware of this dimension. But but we began to experience it. Let me show you what's powerful about that. Uh, whenever the Lord told me, he said, you dance. So I've been going in and I've been dancing. And, and I tell you, it, it's really been, become addictive to me now. And, and so uh, I was dancing one day in the presence of God and, and the power of God is on me. The glory of God is flowing. I mean, I'm traveling. You understand that? I'm traveling in the realms of spirit. I'm moving in the realms of spirit. I've left the room. The room couldn't hold me. I'm somewhere else in another dimension, another locale in the realms of spirit. And I got my, my mask, my sleeping mask on so I can shut out everything. But I'm moving around the room in the glory of God. And, and suddenly the spirit of the Lord come upon me and it's like, and I go up like this, and it's like all of a sudden I become like a giant, and I was I was just way too big for the the things around me, and, and, and then then suddenly this graphic vision came before me, and, and I saw all of these trees, these trees, these big trees, wooded areas, and, and there was trees straggled all through the woods, and, and it was right there in my path, and, and in order to go. Through the tree, I had to zig and to zag, but I stood there and the Lord said, Watch this. And He said, Raise, put forth your hand, put forth my hand. And when I did, the trees split like the Red Sea. And when they split like the Red Sea, I started walking through the trees. And when I walked through the trees, all of a sudden I looked up in the distance and there was this big, massive tree right in the middle of my path. And that tree talked to me. And that tree said, I'm not moving. And the Spirit of the Lord came on me. And I started running toward that tree. And I got really close to that tree. And I put forth my hands, the arms this way. And I braced myself for the impact. And when I hit the tree, to my surprise, there was no impact at all. I went straight through the tree. And when I looked back, the tree was no longer there. And God said to me, Dave, that you're not going around stuff because you don't have to. You don't have to avoid stuff. You're going straight through it and the biggest lies the adversary has ever told you, you will demolish it by the power of my anointing and by my glory. Hallelujah. You are anointed to go through it. Well, watch this. The next morning I got up to dance and I was going in the back room and uh, I stopped by the back bathroom there to take me some tissue with me because I knew I was going to need some. And when I reached for the tissue, the Lord spoke to me. And he said, David, I would just want you to know that angels saw what happened yesterday. I said, really? He said, oh yeah, that happened. 
That, that, that was tangible, that was real. That wasn't just some vision. That actually happened in the realms of spirit. And angels saw that. They glorified Jesus for the power of redemption that was happening in your life. They, and, and I said, Lord, and God said to me, and, and the angels desire to look into these things. So we have misconception about angels. We think angels know more than us, but they don't. And they don't understand the plan of redemption until it starts to unfold in the church. And God said to me, angels desire to look into these things. And he said, don't you understand? When you step into these realms of glory, it's very attractive to angels. Angels start to swirl. Angels are attracted. Angels start to gather. And God said, I want you to know that the host is with you. Come on, somebody. And God said, these hosts are growing because the activity in your life is growing. And he said, don't forget David. When David looked at Goliath and said, you come to me with a shield and sword, but I come to you in the name of the Lord of hosts. In other words, David said, there's more with me than you realize. There's more for me than there are against me. Hallelujah. I might look like a little shepherd boy, but you don't know Goliath. I am King David. I've been anointed with that oil. And I'm not that great of a shot with this sling, but I don't have to be. All I got to do is by faith let it go and an angel will take it in midair and take it to its destination. I got a whole lot of help. Somebody wave your hands and say, Lord, I got a whole lot of help. There's more for us than there are against us. Hallelujah. And if I can show you this passage, I, I really just feel such a flow. I, it's hard for me to stop and just take the time to read it. But Ephesians chapter 3 and verses 9 and 10, you know these passages. But to make all men see what is the fellowship of the mystery, which from the beginning of the world hath been hid in God, who created all things by Jesus Christ, to the intent that now under principalities and powers in heavenly places might be known by the church the manifold wisdom of God. The Lord said, I'm doing something so remarkable in your life that angels will look on and see the wisdom of God and the glory of God. Yes, Look at that verse 10 from the Amplified. The purpose is that through the church, the complicated, many-sided wisdom of God in all of this infinite variety and innumerable aspects might now be made known to the angelic rulers and authorities, principalities and powers in the heavenly <laughs> sphere. Glory Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. So I want to submit to you the more activity, not the more knowledge, uh -huh. the more experience that you and I have in this dimension of the glory, the more there's an attraction of the host. And the more the attraction of the host, the more activity in our lives, and the more activity we carry with us everywhere we go. Somebody gets healed, somebody gets delivered, somebody is raised in a new dimension, somebody gets more than knowledge and understanding, somebody gets a real encounter with the Holy Ghost that changes their lives. Yes, sir. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So when God said that to me, and, and he said, David, the angels, the angels saw that. I, I was mesmerized by that. I was like, wow. And, and it put fire in me. So then what I did was I dashed on into my, my prayer time. I put my sleeping mask back on. I said, man, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to create some atmosphere. I'm going to have some encounters here because I'm going to trap some more angels. And uh, while, I was, while I was dancing, Pastor Chris all of a sudden, this, this almost like this violent thing come on me. Ah, and I started speaking in tongues on a, in a dialect that I never heard before. It was coming out with authority. And all of a sudden, I was made aware that I was literally tormenting demons. And the Lord spoke to me and said, David, not only did angels see what happened yesterday, yeah. But demons and devils and principalities and powers, they saw it as well. Yeah. Yeah. He said, as a matter of fact, it was opposition that planted the trees there to begin with. And they were all lies, saith the Spirit of the Lord. But God said, there's an anointing on my people that torments demons. It torments cancer and diabetes. Anything that hurts, anything that would destroy, there's an anointing on us that will literally torment those things. 
Matthew 8, 28. Put it, put it up, please. I'll be back. Hopefully I give it to you. Did I give that one to you? Yeah. And when he, Jesus, was come to the other side into the country of the, the Gergesenes, there met him two possessed with devils coming out of the tombs. Watch this. Exceeding fierce. Exceeding fierce. So that no man might pass that way. <laughs> and it was like, ah, you know, really exceeding fierce. Right. Yeah. And behold, when, they, when, when Jesus stepped on what they thought was their territory, uh -huh. no man's coming this way. Uh -huh. This is settled. This is our territory. Right. Somebody said, well, you're so bad. I grew up hearing how bad it is. Oh, it's bad. These are the worst of times. Don't have no babies. Don't bring them in the world so bad and terrible. Sky's falling, the Antichrist is coming, it's all about to be over. I was preaching then a few weeks ago at my church on the goodness of God, and I was nailing, just hammering away at the goodness of the Lord, and we got a new couple in our church, and the lady comes up to me, and she said, I'm going to get something straight here. She said, now you are not saying that God is so good, and it's going to get so good that the rapture is unnecessary. <laughs> I said, well, then wouldn't that be something? <laughs> wouldn't that be something if God were that big <laughs> and that good? Right? <laughs> Hallelujah. But, but the, you know, the, the enemy in this is saying, no man's going to pass by this here. This is my territory. Jesus gets out of the boat, steps out on the territory to let him know, no, this is not your territory. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. It's my territory. And when Jesus stepped out, they cried out saying... What have we to do with thee, Jesus, thou Son of God? Art thou come hither to torment us before the time? Just bump your neighbor and say, Jesus tormented devils, and that same Jesus is on the inside of me. And yes, I do believe there's a devil, there's a real devil, and he's real defeated. And I believe there's demons, and they're real, and they're real defeated as well. And I believe if you and I don't stand in our authority, they'll lie to us. And if we're not encountering the glory of God, I've met so many Christians, I've done it before myself, where I believed the lie of the adversary, and I was tormented by the lie. But God said, that shift, there is something happening. God said, those things are not going to torment you. You're going to torment them. It will be their greatest nightmare to try to put their hands upon the life of the redeemed. Come on, somebody. I'm dwelling in Mount Zion. The greater one is in me. I'm under the influence of the presence of God. Hallelujah. All right, so we bear the Ark of the Covenant, and then we stand before the Lord. And, and that word before literally carries the thought that we're standing facing the Lord. So, so we have permission from the Lord to turn our backs to our enemies. Yeah. We have our, our permission from the Lord to turn our backs to every form of hurt, every form of pain, everything that anybody ever did to us, said about us. Somebody says, I'm going to stop you. <laughs> 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 If God be for me. Yep. Yes, sir. I'm sorry. No, I'm not sorry. You can't stop me. Yeah. If God be for me, who in the world could effectively stand against me? Right. Already preoccupied with glory. Already preoccupied with truth. So when the lie comes along, it really is funny. Because we have, we have learned, when you, when you come under the presence and the anointing of uh, influence of God, it will turn you. Yeah. Yeah. And we begin to stand facing the Lord. Yeah. Hallelujah. So God gives us permission. Now this is where we really get to know Him. Now John 17, we get to know Him by looking at Him. Uh -huh. Hallelujah. By the truth. Yes, yeah. sir. Sell it not. How, how do I buy truth? Jesus said it in Revelation. I counsel thee to buy me. Gold tried in the fire. Lord, how do I buy truth? He said, you spend time. And pay attention. He said, just look in my direction. But the only thing that I will require out of you is time and attention. Yes, sir. And when you face me, and I'll get to this in a moment, you're also ministering to me. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Yeah. So we give him time and attention. That's when we really get to know him, just by looking at him. Yeah. 
Riding down the road, I'm not looking at a problem, trying to make it as practical as I can, not looking at a circumstance, but I'm looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of my faith. He occupies, come on, I'm testifying for all of us, he occupies my mind's eye. The things that I can see, the things that I can encounter, the things that I can experience, just by looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of my faith. So Jesus says these words, Jesus spake and lifted up his eyes to heaven and said, Father, the hour has come, glorify thy son with thy, glorify thy son, that thy son also may glorify thee. As thou hast given him power over all flesh, that he should give eternal life to as many as thou hast given him. Watch it, we know the passage. And this is eternal life. Now watch this, through faith we lay hold on eternal life. Mm -hmm. yes, sir. Eternal life is the not dying and going to heaven living forever. You understand it's the quality of life. Yes, when Jesus yes, raised yes, the sir. dead, that was eternal life. Yes, yes, not that Lazarus would be eternal, but he had to he had to operate out of eternity to do that. Yes, when he walked on the water, he had to operate out of eternity yes, to do that. Yes, and and by faith, through faith, we lay hold on eternal life. Yes, sir. Why, why do we lay hold on eternal life? So that we can transition it into the realm of time. Where, where we lay hands on the sick and they do recover because something is transferred to them. Yes, sir. Right where a belly flows, a river rather, flows out of our bellies. That we release something that's in the invisible world into the realm of time. And, and we have been given eternal life. And then Jesus tells us, and this is eternal life, that they might... Know thee, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom thou hast sent. Now, now, please hear my heart. There's a big difference in knowing about him and knowing him. Yes, this, this word know here is the Greek word genosko. And, and genosko, the first definition means to know absolutely. It's an intimate term. I know some stuff. Come on, folks. We need to be so intimately involved with the person of the Lord Jesus Christ that we can say, I know that I know that I know that I know. God is my healer. He is my deliverer. He is my ever-present help. Of who shall I fear? Of what shall I be afraid? If God be for me, who in the world can be against me? I know him. I know him intimately. I know my name is David Levister. I know that absolutely. You can't talk me out of it. Yeah. You'd waste your time trying to tell me my name is something else. That's what the Greek word genosko carries. It carries the thought of you know absolutely. Yes, sir. Yeah. So if the doctor tells you tomorrow you're dying, just say, I know better than that. Hallelujah. I know in who I have believed and I am persuaded that he is able to keep that which I've committed unto him against that day. I know better. I know him. The Spirit was given to search all things, yea, the deep things of God, not about God, of God. There's a difference between searching things about Him and searching the things of Him. But God said, I'm inviting you in to the inner chambers of my heart. I'm inviting you to know me by experience. Yes, sir. The word to know so carries the thought of learn to know. So here's what the Lord said to me. Every form of learning, David, is intended that you might know me better. It's not so you can get everything figured out. You're not going to get everything figured out. We'd probably all be shocked at how much we were missing already. Like, right? But, but, but every form of learning, God said to me, is intended that you might know me. So all my learning is designed to know him more. And then it carries the thought, Genosco does, of coming to know. So my learning deepens my experience with him. Come and keep on coming. Keep on knowing me and knowing me greater and greater and greater. My, my knowledge of God, my intimate knowledge of God deepens my experience. And then it carries the thought to become known. So as I truly know him, I make him known. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that I may know him, yes. that I might make him known in the earth. And that's what Jesus did concerning the Father. No man has seen God at any time but the only begotten which is in the bosom of the Father. He has brought him out where he can be seen, known, and experienced. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you. Are you still here this morning? Amen. So then once we 
Stand before the Lord. The Bible says we minister unto him. So I said it just a moment ago. Facing the Lord ministers to him. Uh, Pastor Lisa talked about Naomi when she told Ruth to get down to the threshing floor. I wrote that down. And he said, don't, don't make yourself known to the man. In other words, don't make no request until the man's done eating and drinking. So when you go stand before the Lord, don't go and tell the Lord everything you want. Serve him. Amen. Feed him. Amen. Give him something to eat. Amen. Give him something to drink. Amen. Minister some bread. Take his word. He says, so shall my word be go forth out of my mouth. It won't return void. Bring it back. It won't return void. If you'll bring it back to me, it will accomplish what I please and prosper in the thing run to a set. But, but don't make petitions until you feed him. Amen. The man's got to be done eating. He's got to be done drinking. That's why Jesus said, Pray our Father which is in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Yeah. Minister unto the Lord. Hallelujah. And once you minister unto the Lord, uh, you know what that does? When I minister to God, watch it. I gain influence. Yes, sir. Influence. Where? In heaven. Because yeah. there's different levels of that too. Yeah. Nehemiah was a cupbearer. Well, what does a cupbearer do? He brings influence to the throne of the king. He brings influence. And, and, and he brings something that uh, uh, is pleasing to the king. Right? And, and the Lord's got some heavenly Nehemiahs that's, that's bringing influence. You know, I, uh, I heard the Lord say this to me. And I, I'm, I'm winding here. I don't know if I'm winding up, down, or where we're going here, but I'm winding <laughs> But when the Lord started talking to me some time back about these different levels of influence, he talked to me out of Jeremiah 15 and 1 and how that, that there was a time in Israel where the Lord said, I'm going to do this. I'm, I'm going to go down here. I'm going to deal with these people. And, 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 and nothing's going to change my mind. But then he said this. He said, even, I know we give Moses a hard time sometimes because he's under the law, but the Bible says he's faithful in all of his house. No, Moses was the meekest man upon the earth. We all know this. He's a very honorable man, right? right. But, but the Lord said this, and it really got my attention. He said, I'm going to do what I'm about to do. He said, even if Moses or Samuel stood before me, my, my mind could not be toward this people. Well, what was God saying? If anybody could have turned me. If anybody could influence heaven yep. on such a level that it would alter the thing that was happening in earth, it would have been Samuel or it would have been Moses. Even if those two, he didn't call nobody else's name but those two, and obviously those two held a special influence in the presence of God. And the Lord said, David, would you allow me to add your name in the mix? And I said, Lord, please do. Because now that I got this revelation, I will not live without it. I've got to bring influence before the throne of God. That's why I got up this early this morning and I danced. That's why I celebrate the presence of God. That's why I still worship and still give Him glory. I still believe in prayer. I still believe in intercession. I still believe God hears me when I pray. Hallelujah. I believe in that. Hallelujah. And, and then, and I, I'm concluding. And then, so you see this, this influence, this marvelous, marvelous influence as we bear the ark of his presence. It turns everything. And, and then he says we're to bless in his name. And uh, so once we minister unto the Lord, Revelation 5, 10, 10, watch this. Thou hast made us, you know the rest of it? Thou hast made us unto our God. Underscore those words. Unto our God, kings and priests. Then we shall reign on the earth. Because there will be no reigning in the earth until somebody appears before me as a king and as a priest. Your authority in the earth will always be measured by your influence in heaven. If you can come boldly to the throne of grace like a king in my presence, you don't have to beg and you don't have to plead for what Jesus has already died to provide you. You belong in this dimension. Come boldly as a king and prophesy the word of the living God. Feed me. Amen. And as you minister as a king and a priest, then that power rises within us to begin to rule and to reign and take authority in the earth. So so we that's when we can turn and bless. 
That's where we can bless in his name. That, that's where we start to walk. What I believe is in some tangible presence. Some tangible glory. And this word bless here it is the, the Hebrew word baruch. And, and it means to kneel. To bless. And, and what that means is that being in the conscious awareness of God elevates our state to such a degree that whenever we see people that are going through difficulties, we literally have to condescend to men of low estate. We have to kneel down because their problems are so small. Man, we're in the big jet Carolina, right? And, and it's so we have to kneel to bless. You know, it's the same Hebrew word that's mentioned in Genesis 1 when God blessed them. Literally, God knelt. When God blessed Adam in the beginning, God got down on his knees. He condescended to men. Hallelujah. And he blessed man. God don't mind doing that to any of us, right? God said, I, I can kneel. I can go where I need to go. God said to me years ago, David, never forget, he that is greatest among you shall be your servant. Then he said to me, David, who is the greatest person you know? I said, Lord, you are. And he said, and I'm also the greatest servant that you've ever known. I've been serving you from the moment that you got born again. Before you were ever known and before you were ever born and into my kingdom, I served you. I dealt with you. I drew you. I have served you then. I will serve you now. I will continue to serve you. And if you make your bed in hell, I will kneel down and I will meet you in that place as well. And the Lord said, David, what I'm doing is I'm empowering you to do the same. So if you make your bed in hell, I'm not going to walk on you or talk about you, but if you make your bed in hell, I will be there. Yeah. Hallelujah. So, so let me let me just show you. He knelt. And, and, and God says, now the blessing of, of the ark of my presence empowers people to serve. To, to, to kneel. It's not about this high mighty stuff. It's not about who I am and what I've done and my name. I don't really like talking about myself anymore. So go ahead and get over your stuff. There's your permission right there. We really don't want to hear about you. Let somebody else sing your praise. Hallelujah. Come on somebody. You come under the influence of the ark of the presence. And it really does become about Jesus. But but he knelt. So let me show you this in Psalm 18. This is my last passage. Psalm 18, verses 34 to 35. He teaches my hands to war. How does he do that? I lift up one hand without wrath. I lift up another hand without doubt. Hallelujah. I got my hands full of incense. Hallelujah. I did warfare through worship. Don't have to fight snakes on the crown. Hallelujah. I give God the glory. Let God arise and all of his enemies will be scattered. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. He teaches my hands to war. That a bow of steel is broken. What looks unbreakable. What looks to be big and massive and strong is really nothing at all. That bow of steel is broken by my arms. Thou hast also given me the shield of thy salvation, and thy right hand hath holden me up, and thy gentleness hath made me great. Yes, sir. Oh, that, that word gentleness carries the thought of condescension. Look at it, pull that amplified up. Watch how the Amplified says this. Thank you, Jesus. You have also given me the shield of your salvation and your right hand has held me up and your gentleness and condescension have made me great. So at the Last Supper, whenever the disciples are standing around arguing about who's going to be greatest, Jesus gets up from the supper table and girds himself with a servant's title. Yeah. And he gets down and he kneels to bless him. Yeah. Peter said, oh Lord, you're not going to do that. Then Jesus said, if I don't do this. Peter, you don't realize I'm making you great. Right now. Yeah. 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 
I'm, I'm, I'm revealing the glory of the Father to you right now. I'm restoring you to paradise right now. I'm bringing you through a massive transition. I'm equipping you for effective kingdom ministry right now. And if I don't wash you, Peter, you will have no part with me. And I love what Peter said. He you know, said, Lord, just wash me all. Lord, just, just from my head all the way down to my feet. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. And see, what I'm telling you this morning is that when we come under the, the, the influence of the presence of God, inevitably things change. We inevitably think different. We see things. The realms of spirit become very, very apparent to us. Principalities, powers, opposition, all of a sudden becomes a very small thing. These things are real. They're tangible. Glorious. More real than the air we're breathing right now. Because I want my people in, in vital contact with my manifest presence and my glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know, I um, I told you this morning in the uh, in the uh, hotel room uh, there was a lot of activity. Just like a lot of it, it was a whirlwind. It was a ruach. It was glory. Just presence. And I was seeing things uh, for for this service here this morning. And, and when I walked into the room, I just I just heard the Lord say, "Seasons are changing." Seasons are changing. And, and, and there's a lot of people in this room right now that your, your season is changing. Like, yeah, you, you've, been, you've been through a season of some preparation, some things that have been happening, greater than we realize, much greater than we realize. But the Lord says seasons are changing. Things are shifting. Reality is breaking through. Breaking through into our consciousness. That the winter is over and past. The, the springtime has come. Things are springing up inside of you. Things are blossoming on the inside of you. The, the voice of the turtle is heard in our land. The voice of the turtle dove, the, the Holy Spirit, in, in much clarity, is heard in our land. We hear the voice of the Holy Spirit. We recognize the voice of the Holy Spirit. Any other voice, we know now, this is not the voice of my beloved. I will not listen. I will not incline. I will not give ear to it. I will listen for the voice because his voice has become very, very clear in my heart. And the Lord said the things that spring in us is going to spring through us to bring the glory of a brand new day. I tell you, I believe with all my heart, God's raising up the people. They'll never murmur. They'll never complain. They'll never empower adversity and opposition, but they'll speak only those things which they've heard with their Father in heaven. I'm not talking about some religious thing. I'm just talking about being in rhythm. God is stirring his nest. And, and the wings of the Holy Spirit is <laughs> fluttering over us right now. And our eyes are being opened to a brand new dimension. And the Holy Spirit is saying, I know that nest has been comfortable. But you weren't created for that nest. Your Today's comfort will be tomorrow's nightmare. You've outgrown that. Let me show you where your real comfort's at. And your real comfort may seem a little uncomfortable at the moment. That is until you learn to fly. But I'm going to teach you to break gravity. I'm going to teach you to break the gravitational pull of this earth. And I'm going to show you that your real home is in the wide open spaces of the glory of God. And so Mother Eagle takes those eaglets up on her wings and she soars through the heavens. And she teaches them to fly. And that's what the Holy Spirit is doing right now. I, I can sense it in my life, the fluttering, the wind of His presence, the ruach, the glory of His presence, fluttering and saying to me, David, you got to get out of the nest. 
Abraham's got to get out of the tent. The woman's got to get out of the house. Peter's got to get out of the boat. And John's got to get off the island. You just can't stay in restrictions and limitations any longer. And if you yield to the fluttering of the Holy Spirit over your life right now, you're going to be awakened to a whole new realm and a whole new dimension of reality. And you're going to realize, wait a minute, I'm too big for this nest. I'm too big. The nest was good for its season. It served its purpose. But now I'm way too big and the nest is no longer comfortable. I've got to fly. I've got to fly. I've got to break the gravitational pull. That's what Jesus is doing. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Is there anybody in the room that says, Lord, I'm just going to yield to your anointing right now and let my seasons change. I'm going to let my season change. I'm not afraid to go into dimensions that I've never been in before. Lord, I'm not afraid of change. I'm going to let my season change. In the name of the Lord Jesus. You know, I'm going to ask us just for the next few moments to be very, very reverent. Hallelujah. And for those of you that would, could you just stand up with me just for a moment and just stay in that, just occupy that wonderful, if you're unable to stand, that's fine. But if, if you can stand with me, please do. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Lord, you're worthy. 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 You're worthy.
answers is said, no, my love, it belongs to us. It's ours. What we do, we do together. We do it together. That's why I'm in you. We do it together. All of the visions and the dreams that I put in your heart, we do it together. You don't do it for me, my beloved. You do it as me. Oh, and this doesn't take a 
a smart person to figure this out, but I'm telling you, this is the heart of the Lord. I don't know how you love the Word, and how you love my Word. And God said, I love the way that you love my Word, and I love the way that you love me. And your, your worship and your praise of me has a special incense upon it. And there's a lot of activity around you. And this next season of your life, your eyes are going to see it very clearly. There's a lot of activity around me. Angels are around me. I, the Lord said, there's nothing we can't change together. And God says, you're stepping into that reality that there's nothing we can't change together. And God said, we're going to change a whole lot of stuff. We're going to change a whole lot of stuff. Thank you, Jesus. The Lord said to me, Lisa, what's in you cannot be hid. It hasn't been. It hasn't been either. But God said this next season, the Lord said there's going to be a whole new level, just a whole new circle. The Lord said something to me recently, and I've been feeling prophetic for you right now. But God showed you a whole new circle. And he said, David, you're about to meet people you never met. They won't look like you. They won't talk like you. They don't know what you know. They, they will not be moved by what you know. They'll be moved by who you know. And they will be so hungry and so moved by who you know. Then they'll want to know what you know. And they will feed from you. says, Lisa, you are a mother. You are a mother in Israel. You are a mother in the realms of spirit, a mother in the kingdom. Oh, and there's so much you're impregnated with right now. Your, your belly is swollen with the glory of God. And the Lord says, you'll birth this glory without any pain. And because before Zion travail, she'll bring forth season of your life, there's going to be a stimulation of the inside of you concerning glory. Glory, glory. I mean, it's going to hit you on such a level. It's going to set on you to such a level that, oh, it's going to bring just a real bowing in your heart. Glory. And God himself is going to talk to you that when you're ministering my word, glory, glory is going to be moving around the room. People are going to be delivered at the sound that comes out of you. And the Lord said to me, David, do you remember 
study years ago about William Brennan. Was it, is it you saw, saw that call, that resolve, that power, that glory. And I said, yes, sir. He said, that's Mark. Not, not that you're William Brennan, but that anointing, that power, that glory. God said, that's, that's him. The Lord said, he, he will walk with a calmness and a resolve. But as he begins to speak, the earth was going to tremble. At his words, principalities and powers will be toppled out of the high places of people's minds and out of their thinking. Lives will be supernaturally changed. My glory will be revealed in and through his life. And the Lord said the next season is glory, glory, glory. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> and wait on your name, bitch. Hallelujah. You guys just touch each other. Grab your hands or something there. Uh, the, but I heard the Lord say this while I was in prayer this morning. He said, it's not an accident that you guys are connected like you are. That it's by divine design. And I see you guys sharing the word. You guys talk, talk the word a lot. Talk different perspectives and things. But the Lord said, your season's changing. And the Lord says, in this next season, the word between you is going to become very creative. It's going to become an, experience, an experiential reality. It's going to become, the, the hunger is going to be, okay, we know this. What are we going to do with it? What we're going to do with it is we're going to change. Everything needs to change. We're going to rearrange what needs to be rearranged. We're going to take the spirit of the revelation that God has put in our hearts and we're going to put it on people and we're going to put it on stuff. Nothing is going to dictate to us, but we're going to dictate to everything. God said that's the season, the fluttering, even in your relationship. Just let it change. Just let it change. God said you're born together for such a time as this creative glory. God, I thank you for that creative glory. Thank you for that clean creative glory in the name of the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Is this the gentleman that prophesied to me last night? Is that you back there? Uh, come up here, sir. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Lift your hands before the Lord. Father, I thank you. Somebody help me. Uh, we thank you for your glory. Thank you, sir, for the word of the Lord that you spoke in my life last night. Hallelujah. I don't have words to tell or express to you how strategic that was to me. It was such a, pit, a, a piece of the puzzle. It helped the picture come together in a time that I really needed to hear that. Thank you, Lord. So I'm, I'm conferring blessing. Lord, such as I have, I give. Lord, I'm pleased, dear Lord. Your mighty blessing, Lord, upon this man. Oh, let the glory, let the glory. Let the weight of your glory, Lord, increase mightily upon him. Let your glory, Lord, outweigh everything else in his life.
place to be in the glory of his presence. Amen. Praise God. What a marvelous, marvelous moment. probably ready. I don't know that officially, but I think we kind of moved the timetable up to 